Welcome back to another Jetpack Compose video in my MVVM for Beginners course. In this video, I'm going to show you how to build a custom toolbar using Jetpack Compose. So we're not going to be using the default kind of top app bar that comes pre-built. We're going to be building a custom one because we have a custom scenario. So just to remind you of what this is going to look like, this is the toolbar that we're aiming to build. We have this kind of search bar at the top here, which captures input. We have this leading icon at the front. We have some, some chips down at the bottom where if I click on them, it then executes a specific search using that keyword. Also this little menu over here where when I toggle it, it's going to toggle light and dark theme. So in this video specifically, what we're trying to do is just kind of get started with this toolbar and add that text input field to the toolbar. All right, so here we are in our recipe list fragment. And I'm going to come down into this column that I built in, this, in the previous video. And we're not going to be using the top app bar widget. And I know, I, I know that exists. You know, I'm sure some of you who have been using Jetpack Compose, you're probably thinking, Mitch, why don't you just use the top app bar? Well, I'm not going to use this because when I, when I tried to use this, whoops, top app bar, um, when I tried to use it, for some reason it was like restricting the height I could use for my toolbar. So I don't know. I just ended up building a custom one. And I thought learning how to build a custom one would be more useful anyway. So that's what we're going to to do. So I'm going to be building a custom toolbar using a surface. The reason I'm using a surface is because we need elevation and a surface composable is one of the uh, composables that al allows you to add elevation to it. So here you can see I'm going to be adding elevation, adding elevation of 8 dp. Now I'm sure there are other composables that allow you to add elevation. This is just one of them that fits our needs. So I'm going to be using this one. Now let's add a modifier, modifier.fill max width. We want this, we want this toolbar to occupy the entire width of the available space on the screen. Now set a color equal to material theme dot colors dot primary. So this will be the, the primary color of our application. Now I know we haven't customized our material theme yet, but again, I just want to remind you that we'll be doing that later in the course. We're going to be working pretty extensively with the theming kind of stuff with Jetpack Compose. So now inside of this surface, you can think of this as just sort of, I don't know, like this ba this background thing that sits in the background. And now we're going to put everything inside of this surface. So it's like, uh, yeah, I don't know. It's something that has elevation. It has color. And then we're going to add stuff into it. So we want to add a row, first of all, inside of here. And then add a modifier to the row. So modifier equals modifier dot fill max width. Not sure if I actually need to do that since I filled max width on this one. But I have it in my code. So I'm going to follow it. All right, so now what goes inside of this row? Well, we wanna add all the other stuff that was in our layout before. So I'm gonna come down here, cut this, cut the text field, cut the spacer, cut the lazy column and paste that down below. Now, do I want this spacer here? I don't think so. I think I'm good to remove that. Let's get rid of the spacer. So now inside of this text field, we want to customize this. So let's, uh, let's add a modifier to this first of all, do modifier. Go to the next line, do fill max width. Now I don't wanna actually fill the max width on this one. I'm gonna occupy 90% of the total width. I wanna occupy 90% because if you take a look at the finished version of the app, we need space for this icon. This icon is gonna sit in the last kind of 10%. So this is gonna occupy 90% of the available width. Now let's add some padding to this. So just do you know 8 dp of padding all the way around it. And we have our value, which we went over in the previous video. We have our on value changed, which we went over in the previous video. Now we want to add some other, some other attributes. Well, one attribute that we need is the label attribute. And this attribute is a function. And inside the function, you put a composable. I'm going to use a text composable. So let's do text equals search. So this is how we get that search text up in the toolbar here. And also, if I was to you know delete all the text and click somewhere other than in the toolbar, you can see that that search kind of nicely pops down there with an animation. And if I click into the search again, it then goes up. So this is a nice little, nice little feature for this text input. Now let's add some keyboard options. Keyboard options will help define what happens when the user, you know, clicks return on the soft keyboard, for example. So like if I go over to our finished app, if I was to, you know, type some text into here, if I just type chicken, how do I get this to submit? Well, it, get, it gets submitted when I click this check mark. So we can de define keyboard options to define what kind of an icon gets shown down here and then what happens when you click that icon. So we want to work on that. So let's come up here to uh, down below the label and do keyboard options keyboard options and this will equal a keyboard options object so keyboard 
options. Now open up this constructor and it takes a bunch of different arguments. If you hover over here, we have, you know, capitalization, autocorrect, keyboard type, IME action. And if you've been, if you're familiar with Android development, I'm sure you know what, you know, keyboard type is. I'm sure you know what IME action is. Autocorrect is pretty obvious. It's like, should you be autocorrecting their text? Capitalization, I think that's a new one for Compose, uh, Jetpack Compose. I don't think that existed before. So the ones that we're going to be using here are keyboard type. We're going to do keyboard uh, whoops, keyboard type dot text, just any old text since this is like a search query. So theoretically anything could be entered into there and then define an IME action, just do IME action done. So if you don't know what IME actions are, it's um, it's basically the, the icon in the bottom of the keyboard. This can be like, well, let's take a look at the different actions here. So we have we have done, we have no action, we have next, go, previous, search, send. Um, some examples that I'll talk about are done. That that's a check mark. That means like when when you click this, I'm done. You should close the keyboard and do something. Next will go to the next widget in the screen, and previous will go to the previous widget, and so on and so on. So we're going to be using done because what we want to do is click that thing. And then the keyboard should close and execute our action. I think search would also be one that's totally fine. You know what? Search might actually be better. Let's use search. That will give us like a little, um, I think it'll give us a magnifying glass instead of, instead of a check mark down here. So search is fine. Okay, next we want a leading icon. So this is the icon that shows up in the front and we can just open this up. It's a function. Now compose makes using icons super simple. I can just use the icon composable and then pass whatever kind of an icon I'm gonna use. You can see the different constructors here you have, or the different arguments here. We have image vector, painter, bitmap. The one that I'm gonna use is a pre-built icon. So I can just do icons dot filled or you can use default or you can use filled i'm going to use filled because that basically just means that the icon is going to be completely painted in and then do search so i'm using the search icon pretty easy very simple to just kind of access those static resources now how do we detect when the user clicks that button in the bottom of the keyboard for that we can use an on ime action performed argument so on ime on ime action performed this is a function and this, this function, this Lambda has two kind of parameters that it p passes into it, the action, and then the soft keyboard controller. So soft keyboard controller, and then I can pass those into the function. So if the action is the one that we designated up here, which is IME search, then we want to execute our search. So I can do action equals IME action search. If that's true, then we want to execute a search. So I can do view model, whoops, view model dot new search. And uh, we should actually pass a query parameter into there. So let's open up the view model, go into recipe list view model and pass a query here. And then here we can change the query to this. And for the new search, we'll just do like chicken to start. Or you could take this and do, you know, query.value. That's going to get the default value. Either way, it's going to be exactly the same. So whatever you prefer, doesn't matter. So that way, when we execute the search, it's actually going to search that, that argument or that, uh, that string. So now in here, I can just pass the query, which is defined at the top. Now we also want to close the soft keyboard. So I can do soft keyboard controller, question mark dot to check if it's null, and I can just do hide software keyboard. Pretty convenient. I really like that they have actually passed the soft keyboard as an argument here. I don't, I, you know, this is a, a thing that has been bothering me and many other Android developers for a really long time, you know, just doing things with the soft keyboard. So I'm glad that they're finally, you know, starting to work on that. Now the next attribute for our text field will be text style. So just do text style, let's do text style, text style, and it's just change the color. So do color equals material theme, dot colors dot on surface get that make sure to get that import for text style now you're probably wondering why i changed the color because the color would have been black by default anyway and that's because i'm going to change the background color so the next attribute that we're going to work on is background color that's going to be material theme dot colors 
dot surface. So the way that this material theme thing is designed, it's it's kind of designed to be like, okay, here's a color, and then here's the color that's built to go on that color. That's how this is. So we have we have the color called surface, which is a predefined color in the material theme, and then you have another color called on surface, which is the color that's designed to be on top of that color. So this will look. These are like naturally supposed to look good together. And again, we are going to be customizing these colors later in this course. All right, so let's. Uh, let's run this and take a look and see if we've set it all up properly. Oh, that doesn't look right. So it looks like maybe I used a uh, a column where I should have used a row or something like that. They look like uh, these are in the same row together, but they should be column. Uh, okay, let's let's take a look. So right now this lazy column is obviously inside the row and it shouldn't be. So let me cut that. And this, I bet you, is a row. Let me go up. Yep, that's a row. So we want that lazy column to be below that row. All right, so let's rerun that and take a look. And it looks like we actually get a crash. So let's go into the log and take a look. The error that I get is surface can only have one direct measurable child. Okay, oh, so that's an easy that's an easy fix. Looks like right here we have our surface and inside the surface we have a row and then we have another child which is the lazy column. So what we need to do is cut that lazy column, go up here, create another column and then put that lazy column inside there. Now grab this row, cut the row and put the row above the lazy column and then that should be good. So now what we have here is we have a column, we have a surface in the column. Now the surface only has one child, that child is the column. Uh, then in, inside that column we have two children, one is the row and then one is the lazy column. So now that should be good. Let's rerun that and take a look. Oh, uh, that's almost right, but it looks like uh, I see my mistake. So this background should not be purple. The reason for that is because I put this lazy column inside of the at inside of the surface. So I want to cut that. I made another mistake. Let me delete this column. So I'm deleting that bracket. We don't need this column. I'm going to tab in this row. Whoops, tab tabbing in that row. So instead of putting the lazy column four inside the surface, I'll put it outside of the surface. That's what I should do. So here's that column, come down below the surface and put it there. So that's the surface ending right there. And we have the lazy column four below that surface. Now that should be good. Last time, I promise, let's rerun that and take a look. There we go. So that's kind of what we're looking for. So we have our search at the top here. We can come in here, we can enter some text. We can also submit that now actually. So if I change this, search to beef and notice this little search icon down here that we've defined for that IME action. So if I click that, that should execute the search. And there you go, you saw the results being updated in here. I could also change this to, um, I don't know, let's do like dessert or let's do donut. Let's do donut, let's look for donuts. Click on search, boom, there we go, there's some donuts. So everything looks like it's good to go. Obviously there's a lot of shortcomings still here. Also, oh, that's weird. If I press backspace, it looks like it goes back to the default value. So that is not what we want. Oh, well, that's fine. We'll fix that later. For now, just notice that we are actually able to enter things. We are able to search them. The results do get updated, but it's not its not complete yet. Like we still have to do a lot of things. We still need pagination. We need some kind of a loading animation while we do the searches. Uh, here, let me just show you the finished version of the app just to remind you of like what it should look like. So if I do a search and I search for something else, we get those loading animations animations, we get the shimmer, we get those results coming down. Also, there should be pagination. So let me search something else. If I scroll down, you know, more than 30 results, which is kind of hard on the emulator because it scrolls so slow. But eventually I'm going to get down to the 30th entry here. There we go. And you see that progress bar show and then it gets the next 30 results. So those are all the things that we still need to work on. Of course, also these chips, for you know, getting those search queries and adding this nice little icon up here. So lots of work to do, but heading in the right direction. By the way, I should also mention that I started publishing the lectures on my website. So if you don't have to watch them on YouTube now, they'll, be, they'll still be on YouTube, but a better way to watch is to go to my website. So if you don't know, if you've never been to my website, just go to codingwithmitch.com and register an account. It's free to register. You would just, um, well, if you just go to uh, register down here, create an account, totally free. Once you log in, so let me just quickly log back in. 
Once you've logged in, you can go to courses up here and here are all the courses available on my website. The Jetpack Compose MVVM for Beginners is now live on my website. You can watch it here. When you go to watch it, just click here and you'll have to register. There'll be like a registration button here. Again, it's free, so just click on register. And then you can watch the, the lectures in order and it also tracks your progress. So here, notice I didn't watch that entire lecture, but it shows that I've watched you know, a certain percentage of it. And you can you know, click on that one. When you finish that one, go to the next lecture and so on and so on. So it's a, it's a much better way, I think, to watch these lectures because they're in order. It tracks your progress. And also if you go to the course page, Page, it gives you a, uh, a little percentage of you know how far you've you've gone through this course so you know how how much of it you need to go how far you've come and all that kind of stuff nice thumbnail I really like the way that uh, this guy designed this thumbnail thanks for helping me choose the winner by the way for everybody who participated on Instagram so that's it of course don't forget to leave your engagement don't forget to leave a like Go to my website, register an account, watch the course there. It's a much superior way to, it's a far superior way to watch the course, track your progress, all that stuff. Thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one.